Uh, okay, so while, while we're waiting, then uh, you'll remember that on the uh, calendar, if you go to the agenda tab, then you can get the list of the sessions. And if you go to mine, then you'll find a GitHub page, which is where the materials are. Okay? So that uh, if we get really stuck, then you can be on the same page as me. Do you think this is long enough? And Is that, is that one? That one, but is it HDMI? It's, I think it's the main black cable coming in. This one. I think it's that one. This USB. This yes. Yeah, this. Oh, this, yeah. this, is, this is very good, and people just have to remember to jump over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so we, no, we, we should put some chairs or something out so that it, it's, it's obvious that this is a... Uh, this is a um, okay. So are we okay? That and and one here. Uh, and it's not on the line of the camera either. So. Uh, Yes, yes. The, uh, what's best for fresh air? Fresh air. Just leave, it, leave it open. There's nobody else on this floor, so we're not interrupting anybody else. No. No, no, no. Okay, so the, the, the link in is, uh, is uh, from this one and... Go back out because I've got things in the wrong order now. So that the uh, The link from the calendar goes to this one. We're, we're improvising with the connection, <laughs> but it but it, it it works now. Um, and from there, you get to the the materials here. If if you if you need to fork the the repository, please do. That's that's not a problem. Um, so this is the the link to the um to the um github pages and the workshop document is this one there which is uh, which is that's now moved to a different position so I've got to find it as so i moved moved it so that it was easier for the previous there we are So, I was a bit unsure what my uh, mandate was for this talk uh, and workshop and so on. Uh, so it's it's a mixture of things. Uh, the f the f the first bit uh, for those of you who heard me talk in Prague last year will be familiar because that's that's the first bit. But what I'll be saying while you're seeing the same things is to stress to much more uh, uh, much more strongly that our spatial wasn't uh, possible without the upstream geospatial open source geospatial software stack so it was that stack which was 
which made it possible to do lots of the other things. So that among the, the early things which were done, like uh, our Goodle, then Tim Kate wouldn't have been able to begin doing it for reading uh, raster uh, data into R without Goodle. So that Goodle had to be there. And things that Barry Rawlingson did needed to have OGR and PROJ and so on, so that they were necessary to do the to do the uh, the the the, um, the next one. So that so that uh, if you're going to follow along uh, with the code, uh, which is so the, the 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 script is 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 in this one here. Uh, if you're going to follow along, these are the kinds of packages you'd need. Um, so that there's there's an introduction which is much of the same as what I presented in in Prague last year, but then the focus was on showing how our spatial developed, uh, but now I'll try to uh, tilt it to show that what we did was crucially dependent on the on the uh, on the um, uh, existence of an open source geospatial software stack uh, then I'll go on to what I introduced uh, uh, earlier today, which is uh, the if I say vulnerability it's it's not vulnerability but it's perhaps fragility that that uh, our work flows so far so that if you look at and this is something which is not just specific for uh, for uh, our spatial it it's been mentioned in lots of contexts uh, with regard to uh, R packages encapsulating or wrapping JavaScript or R packages wrapping uh, other C++ libraries or, so that whatever external software is being wrapped and used in R then you become um, you may be affected or workflows may be affected by upstream changes in those in, 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 in those components um, so that's that, and then I'll end up with the en ending bit of the of the Prague talk if if we get to that. What I'm crucially interested in is opening up a discussion, and so I need to move my watch so that I can see it uh, about uh, how to do this. So one of the one of the possibilities is and I need to back out of full screen here. Uh, one of the possibilities is that we should uh, simply uh, that we should uh, simply uh, use the Uh, this mechanism, a discussion repository for um, starting something so that we, we, we could, uh, say, raise an issue here and then the discussion would start up there uh, about how to future-proof, but not future-proof, future... Um, future harmonize is what we're not saying is we don't want a future proof that we want everything stuck now because the upstream software may change anyway but we want to be able to have control over things things that happen so I'll give you a couple of scary examples from the last couple of months where unforeseen things started happening because of something upstream but maybe we need maybe we need uh, something something here um, um, and you can see that this hasn't been used a, a, a lot as the suggestion of, of an R-Spatial hackathon at the, the USAR meeting in, in St. Louis next year. But I think this is, this is not something that a hackathon will, will solve. It, it, it's something which is going to be ongoing for several years, but that, that uh, opening up for multiple views will be useful, uh, will be useful uh, early on. Uh, so now I'm 
need to that, so that so we may we may get to 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 to, to something like that or some other mechanism uh, that we need a, a separate package which allows uh, other or a separate um, code snippet which allows existing workflows scripts and packages to monitor what they're doing with regard to some of some 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 of some of these the these issues so that that's that's where where i think we are uh, so that the the beginning i'll just talk a little bit about uh, uh, the r and data structures and then there's the R spatial and where where we began, but with the with the as I said with the focus on on other things, um, so that the the text has a number of links and references to uh, to the um, to the sources, with regard to the background of R itself on S, uh, but also the the background of R on Scheme. And so that this is this is from uh, Rossi Harker's uh, JSM talk from nine years ago, uh, where R actually looked like Lisp. But I think I'm talking about our uh, conceptualizations of expectations. So that the motivation for developing R was actually to teach computational statistics or applied statistics, and they needed a tool to do it with and to think about how to express things in the language. And this is also a, a narrative or a, a, um, a view of the world which is ve very prevalent in discussions today too. So the, the, the discussion of tidyverse and tinyverse and the discussions about how to write languages for doing, uh, doing data analysis is, is, is still very much, very much central. But it's a slightly different discussion from the geospatial discussion, which is perhaps more on where the data is coming from and how the data is being acquired and the data structures as they arrive uh, and not necessarily the ones we would have um, designed theoretically, but they're the ones we've got, so the, 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 they're the ones we have to handle. But in R, uh, the, the conceptualizations of how the data should be structured were... Uh, they were blue sky, so that they they were trying to make things as good as they could be, um, and so that the the uh, and also they were doing it in a slightly a, a slightly um, a consciously deceptive way, because if if you're trying to explain to your boss. Uh, who's funding the research in Bell Laboratories, why do you need to write a language uh, for, for statistical environment, for, for statistical analysis? It's an interactive environment for data analysis and graphics. Uh, and uh, Why do you need to do this when what we, what we earn our money off is building telephone exchanges is, uh, is, a little, uh, is a little odd. So that there are the brown books and the blue book and the white book well, on the green book, you get uh, you get the the um, connection with the view of the world of the people who are paying for stuff, which were were um, uh, the analysis of uh, disks of computer chips, which were being or ASIC chips, which were being generated for telephone exchanges, and then to work out which of the factories had produced duds. Uh, which was the so that explaining in the same way that explaining to the Bell Labs managers uh, why we write Unix was that we need we need a, a convenient way to automate the production of documentation and user manuals for tel telephone exchanges, uh, which was the how Unix got written. As, as far as the managers were concerned, it was a group of people who were automating the production of manuals. And they wrote an operating system because they, they, they didn't necessarily go in for three monthly conversations where the managers asked them exactly what they were doing. So that with, with S, then it's very much of the same, and R inherits a lot of that uh, interest as well. So that the, the conception of what, why we're here and what we're doing uh, is, 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 is relatively like that. 
Uh, as, as you're aware, there have been a number of releases of S. There was S2, then S3, then S4. S4 came in, in the, the mid-1990s and introduced formal classes, and those formal classes are, are still uh, used a lot in, in, uh, in Bioconductor and were used in, in SP when SP was, was, was developed. And there's a relationship uh, with S+, in the way in which it was hived off from Bell Laboratories. Bell Laboratories continued developing S, but S plus was, was commercialized outside, outside that company. Uh, in addition, at the same time, there was Lisp stat, so that a lot of what you see in contemporary R for things which will potentially be useful for, as if we're talking about um, uh, data, data cubes, Google cubes, um, the work that Marius Apple's doing and, and so on. We're, we're in the territory which is close to, to altrep, and altrep are alternative representations of indices to vectors. Uh, R, was, R continues to be vector-based, but you don't necessarily need to... It's the way you approach chunks or regions of vectors is something which is under act, very active development in R core. Uh, Thomas Calibera and, and uh, Luke Tierney. Luke Tierney has been in our core for, for over 20 years and before that was I involved in the development of Lisp stat. So that there, are, there are things going on there which have relevance but, but we probably need to look over several fences to, 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 to be able to say, okay, so that what they've been doing in our core is very relevant for w what we need to do with, 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 uh, with data cubes. Uh, another of the points which is relevant for ongoing geospatial concerns, uh, you, I don't know whether you noticed on, on uh, uh, EDSA's, I, I don't remember which, it was about 10 minutes into his, his talk when he was, he, he, there was a slide about OpenEO, uh, and then there were, there were, um, there, there was an, uh, an abbreviation which I don't recall, but the point was that on, when you're doing cloud computing on, on uh, Earth observation imagery, you want to be able to insert uh, small scripts or programs written in Python or R, which means that you have to be able to load Python or load R quickly so that it has on multiple nodes. You need the, the compute engine to load quickly, not slowly. And this is partly the tidyverse, tinyverse uh, bifurcation is that Tidyverse wants to have a, a fully furnished uh, five-star hotel loaded before the user sees it and Tinyverse says okay we we load incrementally we only bring in what we need because that affects the startup time so if you're starting up 128 nodes well of course they're not doing it sequentially but but there is a downtime and if the small procedure you want to run it really isn't, isn't going to take very much time to run, then you, run in, you, you get into a situation where the load time for getting R up and running is as long as doing the work. And that's not good. So you want R to be lean and mean and load fast. And that uh, even things like, uh, does anybody read the, the R core blogs? Or is nobody quite that weird? But there was one by, by uh, uh, Kurt Horning uh, last week where he was describing the registra uh, uh, lazy registration mechanisms for S3 methods. Uh, S3 methods are the ones applying to, to old-style classes, and methods are defined, say, plot.lm, plot.stars, plot.sf. Uh, now you... If, if you're in a dependency tree of packages and you have a script which is running your package and that's hard, so hard dependent or importing from other packages, but it may be suggesting or they may be suggesting from another package and you, you actually need that method. Uh, up until a fairly recent version of, of our forthcoming R3.7, all of those all of those would be added to the search path more or less straight away, but now maybe you don't need to use them so that now they're lazy registered so that they don't enter the search path for methods 
uh, as quickly. Because if you can imagine plot, there are lots and lots and lots of S3 classes that plot gets used for. And if you have to be aware of all of those all the time, this is time-consuming. So that the idea is to back away from that, but to try and have have uh, these methods uh, uh, lazy registered so that they're not registered until they need to be registered so that the search path that the R engine is having to search over to, 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 to determine which plot method to use uh, is, is optimized. Uh, and CRAN has, a, has, a, has a, a popular representation of being oppressive and difficult and never talks to anybody. But they've actually been running the checks on CRAN using this lazy registration on a version of what they do for some time. And it turns out that it's, it, it speeds things up and it's not costly. And the packages which may, may be needed to change the way they registered uh, uh, S3 methods have already done it. So they've already been prompted individually, and so it's so that the idea that that um, that that R is is, is dictatorship and it's not benevolent. Uh, sometimes it's true. Sometimes things need to be done quickly. But altrep and S3 method registration are, are very good examples of uh, optimizing changes, but optimizing in the sensible way. So optimizing things which really do help have been ongoing for, 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 for some time. And many of them have come from, uh, uh, in, in, the case of, uh, in the case of Altrep, it, it, it's come from, from Lisp and from, from languages like that. But these are very specific um, uh, concerns um, that, 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 that developers have. Okay, so that that was that's one point about world views and how 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 how, how, how things fit together. Uh, the intersection between R and the geospatial uh, originally was was the uh, AI geostats uh, list serve the mailing list uh, started in 1995, where AI meant ArcInfo, so it was for ArcInfo people who wanted to do geostats. And uh, then there were grass lists, which came in a, a little bit uh, slower. So that there were, in particular, links between S plus and grass, S plus and ArcView, and they were they already existed uh, 20 years ago. There was code in in modern applied statistics for S for some uh, spatial issues. Uh, and more appeared during the, the uh, 1996, I think, was the first edition of the Spatial Statistics module for, 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 for S+. So that there were some interfaces between the, the scientific communities. I think I'm right to say scientific rather than programming communities. Um, a comment made in 2003 was that sales of... Uh, sales of ArcView and S Plus, or a bundle in Italy, uh, in 2001, 2002, 2003. It's the link between S Plus and ArcView was really important, and most of the people who were driving that market were epidemiologists. So they they needed to have R because they or they needed to have a S to uh, S Plus to to run the analyses, but they also had that they needed to to import data and out, output data from from and display it in 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 ArcView. Uh, that, so that was one driver. The other driver was quite clearly teaching. Uh, Albert uh, Albert Gepard uh, in Klagenfurt um, needed it for teaching. I, I needed it for teaching. So we were t talking to each other about what what can we put together to 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 do teaching. Uh, so that two of the the first packages that he he provided almost as soon as R could accept packages as in in um, early versions R didn't didn't have a, a unified approach to packages but from from 1998 uh, uh, then uh, uh, CRAN was was present and uh, the packages which uh, that were ported by 
Albrecht for were Tripac and Akima and then Ash and uh, SG Ostat. Uh, all of them had been uh, associated previously with with S plus in one way or another. Uh, we don't know when the mass uh, spatial package was was uh, was um, first provided, but it was ab at about the same time. So, 1997-1998, the, these these were available. Beyond that, then there were there were scripts uh, which were exchanged. Some of them were not for spatial were, were uh, uh, on on. Um, the uh, S help list, um, and there was some contact on on the the R help list, but there was quite a lot simply of of, uh, of exchange. Barry Rowlingson, uh, who organised the Geostat in two thousand fifteen, it was Lancaster, I think it's fifteen, um, has has always been very active and and has had sensible. Views on 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 what to do. He he uh, wrote Splanks, which is the the uh, spatial point package or spatial point software for uh, for for S plus. They 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 have an article in 1993 describing that, and it wasn't difficult to to um, um, uh, to to port it to 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 R. Uh, it wasn't released on CRAN before before 2000, but quite a lot of the work initially was was finding existing solutions and then checking to see whether the port gave the same results as the uh, running on the original platform. So that in 1998, uh, Albrecht and I gave a talk, which, like many of my talks, overran dreadfully at at a European Regional Science Meeting in Vienna. Um, I'm not quite sure what the people who were there thought, because uh, in contrast to everybody else who was talking about software for data, for data analysis for regional science, uh, they were all showing pictures of GUIs which they'd done, and we were showing code. And we were also saying that you can download the code and you can run this yourselves. And it's for free. <laughs> Uh, and this was this was something of a of a shock. So that people were asking us afterwards, "Do you really mean this? It's, it's not it's not being commercialized." So we said, "No, no, no." So we actually think that that um, the as we both shared the view that certainly for teaching, telling students that they have to get uh, licenses for software in order to to write their theses or or do their classwork is problematic. Spatial analysis is not probably on the top of the budget for software for universities, especially if it's moving fast. So you don't know which one to buy. As the, so the, the making that choice and then then telling your students that they have to have this software was 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 prop. So we were saying, okay, so we'll choose an alternative route, and and this we believe will be viable. Uh, uh, and so we both, in a way, uh, committed to. Um, to handling things. Something which we talked about, or I'd written to Barry and we talked about, was how to standardize the representation so that if you were doing spatial point pattern analysis, then how would you compare one implementation with another implementation so that, that the two implementations were, say, both in R. They claim to be doing the same thing, but how would you know whether there weren't implementation choices which were being made which would give different results? And so we, 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 this was something which came up very early on and has led to both the development of uh, or the, 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 the thought that it's a good idea to have shared uh, uh, representation classes has, has been uh, relatively central. Uh, possibly distracting for people who just have a job they want to do and don't think about data representation uh, as, as central, but we, we felt that it was important. At more or less the same time uh, as direct contact with, with Marcus Netteles that we did a, a paper in 2000 and then there were contacts with, uh, with, with uh, Marcus and then also with Nicholas Lowen Koch who was a, 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 a special ecologist who was finishing his thesis and also needed code. 
so that he contributed a number of things which have ended up in SPDEP and things which ended up in map tools. Among other things, he wrote the, the very first initial uh, interface to Shapelib for reading shapefiles. Shapefiles 20 years ago were, were fairly new because they were introduced simply to support uh, ArcView. ArcView was originally built as a front end where ArcInfo was the back end, and ArcInfo had the grown up data representations, but they have to have a um, baby steps representation which dropped most of the important stuff, and that was the shapefile. And the shapefile, because it propagated like, I mean, the shapefiles are like an infectious disease. So they go everywhere where there isn't resistance. Uh, and and, and they, they, they've had consequences, as, uh, as we'll see in, in, a, in a little while. Then, then we got into a series of conferences and meetings, um, contact with Luke Anselin, um, who again was uh, uh, with, with uh, Sergio Ray, was organizing a, a workshop uh, in 2002. So there have been a, a fair number of contacts uh, uh, across there. Uh, Sir, Sergio Ray, or Sergio Ray is, is uh, uh, PySAL, so that he has then developed a, 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 a fairly large number of components for a, for a, a Python workflow in specific parts of, of, of uh, geospatial. But our spatial then, then began by um, uh, a small, so the, there was a, a session. Uh, at the at the meeting, uh, but in addition to that, where, where um, the session was 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 a bit scary because uh, the, the 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 for the presenters, uh, most of uh, sorry, be before we get before we got there, I managed to get Quad Honing to come to a grass meeting in Trento. So these are the, the these were the talks in in uh, in in Trento in two thousand two. Um, where Kurt Honning played in some of the ideas which have also fed into the, um, um, uh, 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 the, the OSGO and Phosphor, Phosphor G uh, movement. Uh, in 2002, 2003, the end of 2002, then it seemed to be a good idea to try to encourage people to come to a spatial statistics session at the uh, R meeting, the distributed spatial uh, di distributed statistical computing meeting in in Vienna the scary part of it was perhaps that uh, we we knew that we had some support from within our core but Brian Ripley sat through the whole session and asked questions and when you have a senior uh, uh, applied statistician in the room asking relevant questions then then for for many of us this was a little a little um, uh, testing, uh, but but his his reaction was very positive, and he took us all for 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 a meal afterwards, and so that we felt okay, so we're we're in, <laughs> so that this 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 is going to work, and since then, uh, that's that's uh, six, sixteen years ago, so that when it comes to uh, first doing it all himself, uh, that's building the library's Google needs for its drivers, then building. Google with the drivers, building Proj and making them available as Windows uh, DLLs for Windows installations of, of software which needed it. Then it was Brian Ripley who, who took, took the initiative. He, 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 we didn't ask him to, but he just did. Uh, and that, that I think uh, has helped an enormous amount, be saying to people that you can only use our spatial software if you're running Linux or FreeBSD or something like that is, is not really feasible. If you want to deploy to a class of, for a class of students, then it, it has to be the operating system that the university mandates you don't have you, you can't say well no we have to have a uh, we have to have a unix lab and we install everything from from source that, that's not going to work and certainly it wasn't going to work in in the the mid 2000s so that the work the contribution he made then has has been has been really very important and because it was already in place when and when other people have have taken over then then what you see is is um 
that Simon Arbanik for OS X runs into a problem and asks about it. And then Brian says, but I've tried on mine, and this, these are the steps you need to take. So that one of the descriptions was that you have to follow the instructions that Brian gives you, like walking across stones across a very deep and dangerous marsh. You stay on the stones, you're okay. If you, if you try something yourself, then you'll, the last that will be heard from you of bubbles as the last of the air in your lungs escapes through the marsh. Be because he, he, he has, has a phenomenal uh, uh, level of attention to detail. And uh, he will always explain wh why you have to do, do things like that. Um, so he's, he's been a, a very um, um, important contributor to, to what's happened then. So we had a workshop as well as the, the conference session. The workshop, we found out that we actually needed to talk to each other. And this is the link to now because from 2003 up to the present time, the interfaces presented not just the APIs, but the general understanding of how to represent data presented by the upstream software, that's Proj, Google, and, and, and Geos, uh, have not changed much. Uh, Geos came in later, so it came in for us in 2010. But there haven't been, there have been expansions, there have been new drivers, but there haven't been uh, uh, breaking changes. And what we're facing now are probably breaking changes that we can't just go on living in the uh, arc view shapefile world. Um, sorry, that's when you can turn off the camera because then a, is, is, this is the point at which we, we're not really very sure where to go. In 2003, we weren't sure where to go, so it took couple of years to get SP worked out, but the part which was no problem at all was to say, okay, we represent projections by a, a Proj4 string. So the Proj4 string, it was a no-brainer. It was used by GRASS. It was used, GRASS had a slightly different system, but they, they, it was close to that. Um, uh, QGIS, uh, everybody used the Proj4 string. It was, it was a no-brainer. It was obvious that that was what you needed to do. And if you wanted to transform from one projection to another, then it was obvious that you used first the project mechanism, which was not doing datum transformation, or you used the, uh, the, the transformation mechanism in Proj or the way in which it was implemented in, in Google. So that when, when we were starting doing things from fairly early on with EDSA and talking to, to Nicholas Lowen Koch and... Uh, then um, uh, e traffic uh, on on uh, various lists. So how could we do things with projections? Then that was the way it was was going. Then we got uh, our SIG Geo set up. We had the the meetings at other uh, 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 other conferences. So that there was uh, the first user in two thousand four. Uh, we had a session, then we were describing how we would do things, and you, in, in the descriptions, the or original descriptions, as in the in the R News article about SP classes, then we didn't spend much time talking about projections. We just took Proj as given. And so Proj for string is gives us the definition we need, and that 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 that, 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 that that's fine. Then we got n uh, new packages arriving, and other meetings and things things uh, just developed. I'm not sure whether anybody read the preface to the second edition of the Astar book uh, where we express uh, total amazement that, that when, we, when we wrote the SP classes then we expected other packages that the three of us wrote and perhaps a couple of other people would use SP classes. And then suddenly, it was about 2008, 2009, 2008, the book came out, but already then we were seeing things going on. Then there were thing, more things going on, and suddenly when you're doing um, uh, reverse dependency checks uh, before uh, submitting to, to a revision to CRAN, you suddenly find that you're in the, the multiple tens, then you're in the multiple hundreds, <laughs> And you say, all of these people are, need the, the abstractions, the assumptions that 
we made initially to carry on working. Uh, so that in, in the case of the proj uh, descriptions or the ways in which uh, vector geometries were defined, we needed that to stay, to stay solid. So fast forward to 2016, then SF said, okay, so th there were uh, three initial bytes at trying to make a vector representation in the map tools package. Uh, they were all shapefile based. Then we got uh, one implementation in SP before SP was released. And then we rewrote it and did another one, which has got all the bits and pieces which some of you may have had the painful experience of looking at. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the shapefile uh, mandates a ring direction to say whether something is a hole or not. Uh, so that the rings are all separate. The, the rings are just rings, but it's the ring direction, the way in which the coordinates run, which determines whether it's a hole or not. But there's nothing to say, that if I'm a hole, what am I a hole in? Which you have to do by, by superimposing that ring on all the other rings and then seeing which ones it's a hole of, and things like that. So, deep breath, SF. And that was, that was then adopting an international standard for the representation of, of, of the geometries, which were used in Google, for the OGR part of Google, and used in GEOS. So that simply, that's why SF can do a, a very neat and, and, and uh, uh, efficient uh, communication between the representation inside R and the representation in Google and the representation in GEOS, so that it can do all of those. And it can also use GEOS through Google rather than directly. It also does it directly. Yes? No, in simple features, it's defined. You can't have a hole without associate. That's an interior ring, and an interior ring cannot exist by itself. It has to exist in connection, so that uh, in in simple feature in simple features, a polygon consists of one or more rings. The first ring is the exterior ring, and any subsequent rings are by defin definition interior rings. And then a multi-polygon has ES, but if you have a lake on an island in a lake on an island, then you've got a multi-polygon because you've got two polygons mm. and two holes, but the second polygon is inside the hole in the first <laughs> polygon. Yeah. And I can remember Rossi Harker talking about that. He said for computer graphics, this is, this is a, a key problem. Uh, Paul Murrell introduced it, uh, introduced the, the winding number uh, to uh, the, um, so he changed the internal graphic uh, approach from just polygon uh, to polypath, so t trying to work out whether, whether we're actually looking at something which should be transparent, because uh, from about at least 10 years ago, we've had an alpha channel so we could have transparencies that one object could be put on top of another. And but a lot, of this, a lot of this, we just sort of accepted what was upstream uh, and, and then tried to work, work around it. So that both in terms of, of uh, geometry validity, uh, then things changed in uh, R-spatial from SF which, which was a really good idea, it needed to be done. Uh, but the, uh, and because uh, that was built including Google and Proj, and Proj through Google, then the uh, Proj for string could be uh, looked at or you could simply use the, the uh, uh, EPSG code. But now we're in a situation where somehow we need to fix existing representation so that they're also uh, going forward compatible with changes which are going to happen upstream. So that, so that if, so we'll, I'll get to it in, in a moment, but I'll, first I'll go through some of, some of the, the stacks. 
I was asked to, to write, to revise a chapter on, on geocomputation uh, you know, 10 years ago. And then I finished writing it um, eight years ago, and it got published three years after. The geographers published slowly. Uh, so the, the, the collected issues, uh, books, stuff, uh, it takes takes a long time. Anyway, the the uh, the point of a component stack is that the individual parts, and this was a definition by Doug McIlroy from from sort of Unix and 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 C and Bell Labs, is that what you want are uh, uh, reliable, interchangeable subassemblies, subassemblies of softwares. You don't want monolithic programs. You want components which are well tested, reliable, simple, easy to maintain, and that things stand on top of. So that, that they, they can be joined together in a pipeline or they can be built up hierarchically so that the, 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 the total product doesn't need to worry about the consistency of the elements, up, the upstream elements in its stack. So the upstream elements are assumed to function to specification. And since they're functioning to specification, we don't need to worry about them. Uh, and they, the, 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 the idea of gluing together uh, small utility functions, uh, scripting, uh, the development of ORC, and all, all kinds of things in Bell Labs was built on this idea that, that uh, uh, software tools are software tools and th they should be relatively small, relatively self-contained and just work. Uh, and the the idea uh, has been that because the components are um, interchangeable, sometimes that that you can you can build up different uh, downstream uh, products by by maxi mixing and matching the the upstream ones. But then you get to 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 to, to this comment. Uh, when the costs of keeping a, a stack working exceed those of rewriting, the stack may fail, but this is seldom the case. Now, what the situation that we're in now is probably because of the ongoing changes in PROJ, that their ambition, which, which, which I'll, I'll explain in, in a moment, is, is quite extensive, which is to um, uh, jump over a, a, a cognitive dissonance which occurred uh, many years ago. Um, which I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll get to, but the, but there, is, there there's there's knowledge in software development, software engineering that the, the, this component stack idea really is really is a good idea. So, the, the, however, it leads to dependency challenges. That 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 what then happens is that uh, the outcome downstream will depend on the versions of the components upstream. If the components also use metadata then it will depend on the versions of the metadata. This is something Bioconductor knows a lot about because when they're doing uh, analysis of, of the output from sequencing uh, um, uh, hardware, then they, in order to calibrate it, then you need to know a good deal. If you're dealing with, with Earth observation imagery, then the sensors on the satellites again Sometimes they fa was there one one of one of one of the sensors on Landsat eight failed. I, f I forget the details, but the, there was something where the calibration had had to be handled differently. So that the the that designing the tests to make sure that what's coming out of the downstream components isn't affected by changes in the upstream components uh, can become quite uh, quite complicated. So that this has been a challenge for, for us with, with, uh, with SP, with our Google, with SF. What happens if we modify something here? Uh, we're, 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 we're sort of here. Proj and Google are there. We're here. And then there are uh, packages using and scripts and workflows using uh, uh, our uh, software stack component. And if there's a change there, it may impact us, but it may not impact us. It may impact these guys, and this this is what 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 we've been seeing in the last in the last few months. 
Um, so, there's a discussion of uh, geospatial projects and, and software stacks in geospatial projects. Now get on to the, 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 the main challenge. Uh, this, is, this is the standard SF picture of how things stick together. So SF is there. SF already has uh, 150 plus CRAN uh, dependencies from suggests through imports to depend. So, the, so the, there's quite a lot running on this. Uh, but SF itself depends on external libraries. It depends on uh, through units and LWG on, on a, a PostGIS library and the UD units too but crucially on, on these three, and it's these three that, the, the, that I'd like to uh, make you aware of issues which, which can, can, can happen. Uh, proj is perhaps key because everybody else uses proj. And, and um, so this, this is perhaps the key head, sort of heads up, but there are other ones as well. Um, uh, so this is this is then uh, then the 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 introduction is what I showed initially uh, initially downstairs, uh, but the the quote from from Evers and, and Knudsen is is worth is is worth going through. Um, from when Pro Proj Four began, it's it's now everywhere. So that, that's now. Prior to going through that, then we need to look at the. Initial parts of Proj4. Proj4 was just for projections, and datums weren't in it. So it, the 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 Gerald Eversden Proj4 was just projections, and date the datum adjustment mechanism was added by, I think, by Frank Warmadam before it an an early publication. The code was downloadable from 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 Eversden. Uh, but before it sort of went uh, big time, then Frank had added the adjustment and added, which was then standard practice. We're then talking about the the 1990s, so that 1984 was fairly recent. Um, the idea that you use, you use early binding and the hubs, you go through WGS84 if you're going from a projection to WGS84 geographical coordinates and then back out again. Because then, then you can get from anywhere to anywhere which has uh, a projection. As a, by definition, proj initially could project and could inverse project. There are indeed quite a number of projections from the very early days where the inverse projection isn't even defined. So there's just a projection. There isn't the, the, the inverse projection was, wasn't, wasn't provided in code. And there were attempts by a number of people, including the original author of the software, to, to fork Proj4 to get rid of the unnecessary datum stuff. So the, that it was a bolt-on originally. Um, I won't say a, an unfortunate or not thought through, because for the compute resources and documentation which was available at the time, it was really very, uh, very sophisticated. Uh, as I asked in, 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 the, in the plenary about um, Cliff Mounier's uh, columns, the grid, grids and datums columns, which are, which are really brilliant. And, and what you had to do originally was to sort of work out from the grids and datum column for the jurisdiction where your data were, how you should get from one uh, represent or coordinate reference system to another for that uh, for that one. So that in some cases, India, uh, I think probably does anybody know about Indian uh, coordinate reference systems? For quite a long time, all of the details were a military secret. And that's a bit stupid once you've got satellites, but but. <laughs> Uh, you, you assume that the, the enemy might get hold of the maps, and if they know what the projection uh, uh, specification is, then they can they can use it to target. Yeah. So I think it was in the media that the maps are still some kind of secret. Yeah, yes, yes. 
uh, in communist uh, Eastern Central Europe, uh, in the Stalinist period, street maps were drawn without bridges over rivers or, or because then the enemy might know where the bridges are. But it's relatively obvious because the roads on either side tend to match up. So, so it's a bit stupid not to show the actual bridge, but the, the actual bridges were dropped from the, from, 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 from the published uh, street plans. Um, so, so that the way in, the way in which uh, the, these, these, these things have been handled is, is, is a bit varying. But anyway, uh, Project 4, Frank Warmadam, a lot of sort of development action things happening and the the plus datum and the plus to wgs uh, uh, 84 and if you had those you were good you you you, you could do transformations so that you could get from and to wherever you needed to at some precision and there was no there was no record left of the of the imprecision present in the, uh, are following the transformations. And this has been worrying people dealing in, so that the, the, their motivation is, is this one. See a drastic increase in the need for high accuracy uh, GNSS coordinate handling. Uh, this is more than plus or minus six. Five, six, ten, depending a bit on how many satellites it can see. Um, but not using datum transformation and going, say, from from uh, from. Uh, um, so the difference between geographical coordinates in ED50 and WGS84 is about 125 meters. So this is a lot more precise than than not trying to do datum transformation. But if you want, uh, uh, and you, you, I mean, you could say uh, we believe in geodetic accuracy because that's our subject. We we see the world as as geodesy that we need uh, tens of centimeters, perhaps single centimeter accuracy, and then the the argument being that that. Uh, precision agriculture and construction actually use this, and they do. Precision agriculture, is if you're off by six meters, and your specification of the uh, uh, fertilizer or pesticide uh, dispersion needs 50 centimeters plus minus 50 centimeters, then then plus or minus six meters is not good enough. Uh, so that you do need. Uh, something, something which gives you so that you know that if there's a band of sand running diagonally across your field, which needs a different fertilizer load, then then your machine needs to be able to deliver that that precision. So that their game plan was uh, w is revealed uh, quite quite lucidly, and but you need to you need to read what they wrote. Uh, but since Proj4 is used by everybody, if we change Proj4 to give it substantially enhanced accuracy, then everybody gets the substantially enhanced accuracy without having to do anything about it. It's just that it's not quite so simple. But the, the, the steps which are coming, the ones which I, I mentioned, uh, if you're interested, then, then reading the mailing list posts by Martin uh, Desiru from six weeks ago but they're very well written so it's very clear what what the needs are quite a lot of them came out from uh, from a discussion on the proj mailing list about australia uh, where the, this was where they they said we need to document this there were people from the mapping agency there were other people and and um, so that crucially wgs 84 ceases to be the pivot for moving between datums so that you shouldn't back out and go out again uh, the the OGC WKT the well-known text representation is 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 already here it's 2018 when they wrote in 2017 it, it wasn't published but it it contains a, a much more detailed specification 
we're not yet seeing mapping agencies and other providers of, of geographical uh, position data uh, in trained yet, but it's probably just a matter of time. Uh, one of the changes as far as Proj4 coming from the uh, Google barn raining, raising initiative last summer was to replace the CSV file with the uh, uh, EPSG information in with a, an SQLite database um, so that there are migration notes, there are all kinds of things. The, 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 the summary from, from the email, which was the one that I had up on the screen there. So the, so the problem with hub transformation is not that it's WGS84, it's that you're doing two uh, arithmetical or trigonometrical operations which lead to more error, numerical error, than it would be if you just did one. But if you're just doing one, then you can't do everybody goes to one place and then comes back out. You have to have many-to-many -many possibilities. But in most mapping agencies, they don't have many-to-many -many because the, 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 the standard projections which are being used in-house or in a particular jurisdiction are fairly limited in number. There may be a dozen that are unlikely to be more than 20. If you're in the US where each state may have its own uh, state plane, then there will be more, but for each separate state, there won't be an enormous number of, of paths that you have to find to go between one projection and another without going uh, through, through a hub. So that the suggestion in the international standard, in, uh, in Martin Desiro's uh, understanding, is forget about hubs, just, just gone. It's becoming easier. Evan Rohr has, has, has written code to, to, to do this, but it gives you, <laughs> so sometimes he says it gives you dozens especially if you're reaching over jurisdictions because maybe you use the coefficients or the table from one or the coefficients and table from another and the larger your area of interest is the more possible paths there may be across that but it's not solved yet uh, and the, 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 the other thing is the need for an epoch uh, so that the so that, that's the link to his talk, which I put in yesterday evening. Um, and then there's the, the QGIS, which I've, I've already shown you, so that I can go, go past that. Uh, but what, so what, what I've been doing here is, as so I'm now running on the project which was released yesterday evening, uh, and I'm using SF, um, uh, the development version. Uh, so that I'm using the, the Brazilian data and I'll try to show you wh wh how things look. So that if you look at the, the definition of the EPS, uh, EPSG number for this data set from, uh, from Eastern uh, Brazil, this is data from, from the, the, the um, it's, uh, special epidemiology, so it's from, from around uh, to 2000. Uh, we worked out, as the original data were map info, uh, so we worked out from that what the project, the, all that said was, was it's, it's um, UTM um, zone 25 south, and we knew where it was, but we didn't know what the, uh, what the 2 WGS84 was. But here, it, we now know the EPSG number looking backwards, and we've that this is this is for for a 1970 um, uh, Br Brazilian uh, Brazilian or South American standard. So that if if we find out from from the data set that its EPSG number is is 22525, so that we can ask Proj Info, which is the answer to your question about uh, how do you find out the paths. So that Proj Info is a new utility written for the Proj library and which gives you either a text representation or some other, some other representation. But I haven't yet found out whether ProjInfo is also a library function. I guess that there's a library interface to it as well, so that you can ask, ask it from within the uh, C or C++ code uh, to give you a list of the, of the alternatives. If we simply ask it to, to, to report the 
default, which is the most recent WKT uh, representation of the uh, 22525, then we get the same one, but we get an additional, the additional uh, plus type CRS on the end that, that you, you won't have seen before because there are different types and there are also lots of new progies which aren't progies that, um, and so on. But, but anyway, so if we go through this uh, briefly, the, the, the um, proj4 string looks like proj4 string, that, 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 that's, that's okay. Uh, you get the proj CRS and then the base geo CRS which is in the same datum and it says well, the ellipsoid would have been known from the original Proj4 Evanston uh, Im implementation because that acknowledged ellipses but didn't do datums. It did ellipses but not datums. Um, a prime meridian, all of this. And, and then you get conversions, which is a new element in the standard. It wasn't in... Uh, well-known text one, it's in well-known text two of 2018. There's also 2015, there's 2018. So that you get this and you get, so that, that's, that's, that's now covered up, uh, was that two screens worth of stuff? Uh, we can also use proj info and this is, the, this is finding which paths we get. So you can ask proj info, how can I get from this one to that one? And the second one is, is the Sirgas 2000, which is a GRS 80 ellipsoid and datum. And these are the ones which were found um, with a, and this is, this is then the proj string for getting from one to another directly. That's not going through the hub. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't actually need to because the, the, the ellipsoid of the target is GRS80, which would be the same as, as WGS84 anyway. Um, and what you're doing is pushing steps of the trans transformation pipeline onto the stack and then popping them. So that, that I won't try to explain this to you. I have difficulty myself in working out how we can do this. In Grass, they've managed to do it, but it's mostly hidden from the user. And um, I think trying to teach this to students would be a very good way of, of emptying the, <laughs> the, 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 the classroom very quickly. So uh, that's the first of the operations. What you might look at here are the... the uh, is you're getting a proj helmet and the three parameters, the three parameters there. If we go down to the second, this, this is the second operation, and we're getting um, here, this is, this, is, uh, this is the one which came up red in uh, it came up red in, in, uh, in QGIS. Uh, proj horizontal grid shift and the name of the grid. We're still in a situation in SF that we need to say NAD grid, but NAD grid is also deprecated and we should be then be using a proj horizontal grid shift or possibly vertical grid shift is also possible. But you'd need, need to have the grids for those. Uh, the precision here is two meters, at least one grid missing. There's only one grid being used, so that the only grid being used is, is, is missing. If, if we go to the head of this one, this is five meter precision. And it's, it's executable because we know how to do helmet. So that we know how to do the three, three coordinate and seven coordinate. We know how to do that. So, and the, 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 the output then finishes with the grid CA7072 underscore 003 GSB needed but not found on the system. Uh, I did manage to find the grid, as I'll go on to that in a moment, so that what, what would then happen with this data set? So I'll 
use the, simply the centroid of the first polygon in the data set, their census tracts. So this is, this is the input in uh, Corrego Alegre 1970. Uh, if we do the manual pivoting or going through the hub, then that would look like... So it first transform to uh, WGS84, and then transform back to UTM uh, Zone 25 South, Sirgas 2000. So we're getting this value. So you can see that, that the two representations give a rather different... Uh, it's about 30 meters in the Xs and about uh, 6 meters in the Ys. So it, it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's an Eastings movement uh, that's, the, the, that's occurred by cha changing the datums. So that if we go directly, uh, that's again without the grid file in share proj, so the proj lib, uh, we get the same, same result. If, however, the grid file is installed, but the definition included in the object includes the two WGS84 with the coordinates, then it uses those rather than trying to find out whether there's a grid. So that the grid may be there, but it still won't use it if, if the uh, ingested uh, coordinate reference system specification from the file you're reading includes a 2WGS84 with PROJ6. With PROJ7, that should then throw an error because it says you're using a defunct key, uh, pro, 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 PROJ4 key. If I, if, if I rewrite this to say UTM Zone 25 South, the ellipsoid is international that we knew before, units are M, but if I add in current SF with Proj 6, if I write NAD grids is that grid, then I get this value, which is off by what, about three meters in the X's and about one and a half in, in the Y's. Uh, I think you've realized that I'm not going to show you how to code this. Because what you need to have on your computer are the grids, and then you put the grid file into the share proj place and change the specifications. Here I canned it because I'm running without that file on my computer because I needed to do that to show the QGIS. Uh, and I haven't found a way of swapping in and swapping out the grid files. And, and because uh, uh, wherever share proj is usually not uh, user writable, then I have to change the super user and move it and so on. There's, an, there's another utility which I, I think for Martin's use will be useful. That It looks as though proj is going to let you have uh, a... Um, a sequence of places to look rather than a single place to look. So that maybe in user space, you can have a user space, and that might be in an R package, a user space addition to the, to the globally specified uh, uh, user unwritable uh, proj lib, as the share slash proj. Slash. That, I think, is a possibility. And... If I forget that I said that, then I hope it's being recorded and we need to put things like that in the issue in the discuss. Uh, will we be able to allow people, as we, on the Windows and OS X binaries, CRAN binaries of SF, then on those binaries you get the basic set of, uh, of uh, proj shared files, the metadata files. But telling people that everybody needs to have a really big grid file for a part of the world they don't need is uh, it's clunky. So I don't think we need to go there. But we need to have a way of helping people realize how they can do it. And if they have to do it by being super user, copying the grid file in, and then when you don't need it again because a, a different workflow doesn't need that, 
moving it out again, it, that's clunky. But if, if there was a way to put, uh, to sp say, okay, now I want to add to the basic uh, proglib definition of where to find the metadata files, something else, another directory which contains the metadata files, then that, that might, be, might, might be helpful. Okay. So I can, I can do this in SF using the grid. But I had to find the grid myself, and, and, and I can do it also using CS to CS, which is the older version of, of how to do it in, in Proj. And that gives me the same thing, but it also gives me a Z. But it, the, these are, these are numerically, uh, numerically equivalent. If I use CS to CS without the grid file, it gives me this number, which you'll have noticed is a different number from the one which I got directly using uh, using SF with the 2WGS84. Uh, now, what's happening is that it's using the alternative coefficient values. As there were there were there were two sets of coefficient values uh, which which were r revealed. Now, why they're different, I don't know. But but presume either one is is an older version, the other is newer. The the two WGS84 coefficient values in e, uh, EPSG change over time. Most often they get more precise, they get more digits, but sometimes they change, and you you don't know why. Okay. If if we use uh, um, uh, the ST transform proj in LWGOM, then we get the same as as SF. But SF is using proj through Google, and uh, the one in uh, LWGOM is using uh, proj directly. This is now a moot point because Google is now using proj directly, whereas previously it, it did stuff first. So that that uh, uh, Google tended to be much more forgiving than proj was if you hadn't defined something, then it would give you a default. Uh, and they've they're backing off from that, so that now if, even if you think you're using proj through Google, then it will still give you native proj. Um, the, 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 the uh, Eastern Brazilian grid was retrieved from uh, iforsoftware.com. As I uh, um, I, I used DuckDuckGo, and even DuckDuckGo found the, the verbatim name of the file. The, the, fortunately, the file had a very unique 7070 underscore 003, and then prepended. So it was, it, there, were, there aren't many things in the world which, which are called that. So it, it, it was, it was, it was uh, uh, findable. Uh, I'll throw this at you. Which, which was one of the pages that I visited uh, while I was looking for the file because it's the it's the Brazilian geodetic service. These are these are annual movements. Uh, the scale is 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 here. So that this is a centimeter per year. And this is, these are the movements which underlie the Sirgas uh, series of definitions. So that, that uh, South America is moving mostly northward, slightly northwest, at about three centimeters a year. 10 years, 30 centimeters, 30 years, you're a meter. So that, that, that's why, why ge uh, geodesy and geodesicists say, we're right. 1984 was a long time ago. <laughs> that, that, that's the underlying uh, picture, is that if, if we're using definitions which are out of date, they're out of date. So it's like going into a pharmacy and, and you're given medicine which is, is its shelf life finished five years ago.
No, there's the, there's the ellipsoid, which is the same one as, as GRS80, but it's also a datum. So it, 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 it's, it's saying where everything is in relation to the, the center of, so that it's, it's ge geodetic. So the, this, the, this is, this is uh, the, 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 the uh, there's a dislocation of the stations for the Siergas uh, me measurements. So Siergas started earlier to, to define for the whole uh, South American cone what it was doing. And, and it's obviously prior to about probably the late 70s, we didn't have satellites out there measuring stuff. So it was very it was quite difficult to get a picture so the, the, the 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 sequence of definitions of the shape of the ellipsoid uh, varied over time and they get they got closer and closer without being able to observe from space but as soon as you could observe from space and technology got good enough to be able to detect uh, centimeter level changes then suddenly you say, okay these these when I went to un university, plate tectonics were controversial. And the general view was that they don't, they don't move. And, and that, that, was, that was in the, in the middle of the second half of the last century. So that was, so from, uh, as I left, left uh, so I finished my bachelor in 72, uh, and, and, through to 1980, suddenly plate tectonics became the received wisdom because we knew that that was that was what was going on because satellites had had been able to detect centimeter level deviations. So that now we know uh, that say that Fukushima led to a big shift. So that you're then up in almost a meter, and it's also not just uh, horizontally; it's also vertically. So the okay. But as I think you said, said to Robin in, in, in the break, I was talking to somebody in the break, and I says, do we go with stop the world, I want to get off? <laughs> or or do, do we embrace uh, the, the, these, uh, these uh, interesting features of, of where we are? Uh, so I need to get back to my talk now. That's this one. Uh, you can, you can. You know, there's the download link here. You can see that the the they publish grids, and the the sum of the the grid files uh, is. Um, there was a new one for Europe published yesterday. As, as here I've just got the datum grids, uh, but if, if say we went to, as they, they don't show you the sizes, so I've got them on, on my work, work machine on my desk, then I've got all of the, the, the datum grid files. Uh, in, in another case, which, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you to round off, then, then um, if, we, if, if, if we've got time, um, Uh, without just staying on Geos, because it's not just a Geos story, um, uh, we we run into a situation where uh, the uh, the 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 so I should probably oh, again open this, and you can you can see chapter and verse. There must be a way of jumping to the the, the last opened, um, which I haven't found. That that, uh, that w it was not that one, so it, it will be. It's useful to go back there because that I think is probably what we need to do. So this is this one. So this issue, 
what happened was that uh, Koton Inc. Uh, wrote to me and said, "Has uh, I, I just updated uh, the CRAN testing servers from GEOS 371 to GEOS 372. And uh, three packages failed. Uh, BaseX, BirdRing, and uh, INL MISC. Uh, those packages failed. Um, is this RGOS? It, did you do something in the last version of RGOS which changed something? And he said, I don't think it's that because the only thing that's changed is the version of the upstream software. So that in order to run stuff in uh, INL MISC, then uh, it needed RGOS, and RGOS had been built against the new uh, GEOS. Uh, RGOS itself didn't have any problem, but this one did. So we... Um, I set up an issue, but I put it on SF because both RGOS and RGOODLE are on RForge, uh, partly because they're legacy and we go with SF going forward, but because there are lots of packages which use those still, so we still have to, to keep things running. Uh, so here was, the, here was the documentation of what was going on. And uh, so I'll go back to... So let's see if I just go back one. So... Uh, I was running uh, um, RG, current RGOS, and uh, I made a change and released uh, RGOS uh, 051 with a fix. Uh, what appeared to have happened, uh, and that's documented at the end of the issue, if you, if you want to read the issue and go to it, uh, was that there was a... a very, very marginal tightening of a validity constraint on nodes in GEOS. And the same had happened in, in Java topology uh, system, JTS. And what this meant was that uh, previously, if you had an invalid input, uh, uh, input geometry, it would compute, and uh, the output geometry would also be invalid. It's in term, SF terms. So uh, what, we, what we managed to do in the issue was to find, find out exactly what was going on there. There was, there was some, uh, there was some um, the, the, the were, it was essentially uh, trying to uh, intersect uh, a polygon with with grid cells, but it had chunked them up, and they'd been classified so that they were there. And and uh, both in RGOS and in SF, uh, exactly the same uh, thing had a self intersection. Um, the geometries were also invalid in GEOS 371 because we tried that and everything worked, uh, but the operation succeeded. So despite the fact that the input geometries were invalid, the operation succeeded. Uh, so what, we, what I did in RGOS 351, and this will also propagate to, to SF, is to provide new warnings and to provide a, a dropout. So that previously in RGOS we had had uh, an argument uh, to functions like uh, intersection and so the the topology operations, we had a check validity uh, argument, but by default it was false because obviously it, it it's time wasting. And I think this is this is you've hit this too. Uh, so by default it was false, but now if it detects if RGS detects that it's running on on um, on uh, Geos after 371, then it turns the default, uh, the default to check validity and fail if invalid. But it also offers a new uh, option of, uh, of zero buffering. Uh, so that, the, that uh, the, 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 the workaround is then, is then, um, is then to, so that, 
Okay, so that you can you can also handle so the, the 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 that instead of being false and true, it's now zero, one, and two. If it's zero, it's false. If it's one, it's true. If it's two, then if the geometry was invalid, then try zero uh, width buffering. And zero width buf buffering reads the geometry which may be invalid into the geo structures and then writes them out again, hopefully valid. <laughs> But not always. So that this this involves a, it's a waste of time. Essentially, it's essentially we should push back anything which isn't valid. But invalid things can also get into SF because people can do a computation on geometries which ends up in an invalid geometry, for reasons which we neither we nor the GEOS people nor the JTS people have. They know that it happens, that, that you can do operations and you end up. No, it, no, by definition, it must be valid because the two inputs were valid. Uh, so what I, what I think sometimes is going on is that Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but the, the, but the, but the, that was essentially a, a valid operation. So, so it because I, I noticed the 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 the, the point that the, the the issue that was raised there, and it's the same kind of thing. Something got got slightly tightened in Geos. And I think the reason they tightened it was because they wanted to make their throughput more efficient. Because if it was tightened, then they didn't have to do lots of side checks going forward. And that's meant that things which worked before have stopped working. <laughs> uh, but the, I think the, 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 the take-home message, uh, and I'll try and uh, I think it's... Was this, this was the issue. As you can see the, from, the, from the slider that the, the issue went on, on and on and on and on. Uh, but after, after a little bit, then we'd got uh, we'd got Dan Baston saying he's curious, and then 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 pinged uh, the the, um, uh, the this is what's his name Martin. So I forget. No, so I mixed up two threads now. But anyway, we got the uh, we got the, the the description back from for, so this is the the analysis in JTS. And what has happened is, is, is this one. Is it's that one, which which was the the problem. Because do you, uh, if you're in a shapefile world, how do you draw the boundary? Do you, is, is a which way, is a which way around the hole do you go? Uh, so the, the 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 there's a node which is on on both sides of this. Um, and, and so that so that the operation succeeds in GEOS 371 but not in 372 and then we got a, 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 a comment towards we're still only three quarters of the way down so this went on quite a lot and the responses were, were very uh, were very And th then I linked across to, to invalid map shaper output geometries because there was the same issue in map uh, map shaper. Uh, so that this this uh, so make it a bit bigger. Uh, the original issue was was uh, Geos uh, eight three eight, which presented two valid geometries whose union was invalid. Uh, JTS 107 had more discussion about this. G JTS 257 is the fixed implementation. The problem turned out to be a noding robustness issue, which caused the valid input line work to have a self-touch after noding. So the self-touch was where the, 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 the lines crossed and the node was, was identical. This caused, caused the output to be invalid. The fix was to tighten up the internal overlay noding validation check to catch this situation. That had the side effect of detecting and failing all self-touches in input geometries. Previously, vertex-vertex self-touches were not detected because they weren't looking for them. 
And in many cases, they would simply propagate through the overlay algorithm. This made the output invalid as well, but since the inputs were already invalid, this behavior was considered acceptable. Which is, it's all logical. It's just that, that it, it's deep in the discussions upstream of us, and then suddenly we find a downstream of our GEOS and SF package failing. Uh, so that it's possible to disable the additional noding vertex self-touch to revert to the 371 behavior. But this would reintroduce the GEOS 838 failure. So you can't do that. Allow self-touching input and to keep the fix for 838. So it would need, you'd have to fully node the input geometry, which is not done uh, as a performance optimization. So if we back off that, then... Maybe the client could ask for that, but the client isn't going to know, so you can't do that either. Um, and then he's, he ends up by saying clean, uh, cleaning the geometry using uh, buffer zero-width buffer as a, is a, has a known issue in some cases, but the good news is that invalidity caused by self-touches is not affected by that problem. So that's the one we've gone with for the moment. Another deep breath. Right? So the, the, this, this was not something we expected to happen, uh, not least because it hadn't happened before. And then a change introduced to solve a different problem upstream provokes the validation of, the, of, of noding and catches things which, which before weren't, uh, weren't happening. So the, the, the description here for, uh, follows through. Um, so this is, this, is, this, this is a quote, for a quote from the issue. And, and nobody's safe. As I, I thought, I, thought uh, I run nightly checks on the code from both editions of our book. So it just runs on my machine every night. And I, hadn't, I haven't looked at the pictures. So I just check to see whether the text output matches. And I'm going to have to put in better tests. Because uh, when I'm using uh, Google 3 built against Proj 6, then I'm, six, then I'm getting a different uh, definition of the coordinate reference system for the uh, Snow Soho Cholera data set, which is in chap Chapter 4 of the book. So you, you, you know the Snow story, and you know that it's used a lot in in, in uh, uh, GIS boosting to say that GIS solves problems. Of course, Snow did, knew already what was causing the ep epidemic. He didn't need a map, but he drew the map to illustrate what he'd done. But anyway, the data set is, 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 is fun to work with. And uh, previous... Sorry? It was previously when I was reading in uh, the uh, coordinate reference system, it would include an OS... Uh, OSGB datum, but because datum is now deprecated, I don't get the datum. So I go to map view, and here we are. This this is this is Broad Street, but if we zoom in, it's not Broad Street. It's 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 houses. Broad Street is here. I, I hadn't I hadn't noticed. It 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 just it just. As I, I, was, I was preparing exercises for a different workshop, and I said, this is a nice data set to work with. And so I just ran the code. And I said, so I'd better look at them before I go live. For the people in the workshop, it was fine because they were using Windows and OS X and had the, the old, old proj from, from CRAN. So for them, everything worked. But, but this, this sort of... Uh, that it would be very useful to have easy to insert tests to put in into workflows so that we know when changes in proj. We've got some in tests in our G on our Google and some in SF, which which we've left with the proj 493 uh, output so that we can see that there are changes, but we can't we can't. We haven't got any further yet, so that they're there, but we're, we're not doing doing anything with, with with that output. So that what 
what I th was then doing was to see what's stored in the uh, geo package. So what's stored in the geo package, uh, that reading it directly uh, is, is, is this. So we've got the, the spheroid is airy. Uh, we've got the projection. Then I said, but I, this is the, the geographic uh, coordinate reference system. It's this one. Datum was stored. It was, it was, it, it's there in the file. But then I'm reading it in using stread, and it's gone. It's not there. So I guess if I uh, downgraded Proj, then maybe I'd get it back. Sorry? Uh, that is just below, or is that no? No, in this one, there's no datum. But, but what's your proj version? Five? Six? Four. Four, 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 nine, three. In four, nine, three, everything will work. I, I'm, on, I'm now on 6.2.0, as I installed it last night, to, be, to see, see whether anything, anything else had happened to, to lose my... So I, I slept quite well. No, as if if you're if you're on 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 a, if you're not installing binary, then you will have install or you you will have a, a single proj on your system anyway, or you have to install proj. So that it's the provenance of proj which is which which is now important. So that your your proj would so that if you installed the development version of SF on the uh, X soft version, you would get the, a final element which we've added, which is whether you're using the old or the new API for Proj. If you're using the old API, uh, then, then it should behave, it should continue to behave at least until March next year as expected. And so that what Edsa and I have been doing is trying to expose ourselves to what happens if you go bleeding edge. And and we're quite bloody. So, so the, the, but this, this was a surprise. I hadn't expected uh, this to be, as what it's saying then is, okay, uh, going to Web Mercator, we just go to Web Mercator without any datum transformation. So we're off about, about 120 meters. Uh, I said, maybe it's SF, maybe maybe uh, Argoodle. So Argoodle is using the old interface, but it still doesn't get the the datum. So that I, I that I do not know why it's happening. Uh, SF was was built using the new interface so that it shouldn't have the datum. So that that's predictable. But that Argoodle, which was built to use the legacy interface, still hasn't got it. That's happening in Proj, so that Proj just isn't isn't serving, isn't providing that, and has the sa the same consequence. And if if uh, this is then reading from the original book uh, shape file, the the one which is distributed with with uh, with our book, and that's got the datum. So that the datum. So that in both cases with Proj6, we need to manipulate the, the CRS read in from the file in order to put things right. Now, we, I could and didn't try to insert the datum, as I perhaps could have tried to insert the datum for the one read in using our Google. Uh, I didn't try that. But I said, OK, fixed is, is the one including now using NAD grids rather than... Uh, because I can't have two proj in a proj4 string, because that's in the, in the transformation pipeline, not in the, in the definition of one, just one. So I use NAD grids to say that this is the grid I want to use. And this particular grid is included in the uh, uh, proj datum grid uh, Europe. 
set so that you can download. It's about 15 mega uh, compressed. Maybe not compressed. It's it's binary. The, the, this the, is this the, this 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 is the file. Uh, the, 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 I I had to install it locally. Uh, I got it from. Uh, what the proj people say? What, where is my this one? On this one. Um, the, the, these, these are the ones which are available. So this, this, I, I, and it's if if I open this, it's quite a large file. So it takes it takes it's, with Edurome, it, it it even with a wired connection, it takes a fair time to to download. I guess I should ask them to put the the sizes of these files uh, on here. So here, here we've got this, this one, and there, it's expanding, it's growing, so that the new one here has, has more in, uh, so that here it's got this one. This is the 15 mega. There's, there's 15 mega uh, uncompressed, and uh, the Belfast one, and, and so on. So that there are a fair number of different different grids here. So this is the this is the relevant grid file. Uh, so uh, where were we here? Uh, so that after after having uh, installed that, I could then. Get back to, and and so that in both cases, whether it was read in using, using S, uh, SF or, then I could get back to, uh, Broad Street being. Uh, I think I need to to back out in one of these, and I think it's uh, Open Street Map. Has the pump? It has the snow pump, which was what I needed for the workshop. But finding out that my digitized street street lights, so the, the the idea was to uh, was to uh, look at uh, shortest path me measurements from the pump to houses with mortalities along the street rather than uh, Euclidean, because that was the whole point of what Snow was doing. He's saying that it's not spreading through the air, which would be Euclidean distance, but it's spreading along the street, so that. Typically, you'd go to the nearest pump, and if the nearest pump isn't uh, the infected one or the source of the infection, then you're less likely to uh, to contract the disease. So that was the point of the exercise. That's the one which is in the book, but but the the book has been brought <laughs> brought down by 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 these these upstream uh, changes in the software. So there are a number of other uh, number of other examples. That, that Martin's example with with Tmap is is another one where some tightening, some small changes. There's, there was a change made very recently in the ShapeLib driver uh, in in Google, which again has 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 made some shape files which previously they were invalid, but it didn't matter. And so the, 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 there are a number of these kinds of things which are happening and. Uh, I'm not a. I'm I'm not. Not given to believing in conspiracies, but s somehow 2019 seems to be the year when all of the things which we'd hoped wouldn't become important and need dealing with, so that, that instead of them coming up once once every second year, they're all coming up now. <laughs> uh, and the. There will probably be more. So that one thing would be, which is useful to, to coordinate, is is uh, sharing information about similar issues affecting uh, proj. Another one is uh, geometry issues, because if it's if it's already been solved for one package, so that your experience with with Tmap would have been helpful, and the same thing. So that if there's a if if there's a place where we can 
where we can establish issues where we can say is, this appears to be similar to that and then maybe somebody else can, can comment on that. Uh, but I'm not quite sure how to do it. Uh, RSIG Geo is a bit big, although some of these issues have been raised on RSIG Geo because it goes to lots of people who are further away from the, the, the software. Uh, but how to do it, I'm not sure. And uh, beyond that, for those of you who are not package developers, what we need to know are how this impacts the workflows, your day-to-day -day workflows, how they are impacted by uh, either by uh, the upstream changes or our suggestions for, for how to solve them. So the, the, uh, in, in the, the coffee break, we were talking about how to emulate QGIS, as QGIS has a GUI, so that it's easy for QGIS to push the choices into your face and then put lots of red color over, over the words, saying that there's something here which would be really useful. You'd get much better trans uh, coordinate transformations if you had this grid, but you don't have it, so you can't get them. So the, that would, from, from, for those of you who are not pack, package developers or maintainers, it would be useful to have feedback on, 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 on that. So that uh, uh, if, if I would uh, wish to, and of course I don't wish to uh, intervene in the preparation of the wrap up feedback to the plenary this afternoon but if the person writing that were to ask where should we where should we coordinate co-locate discussion about these things so that it's easy for people to find uh, so the mechanism so as as a, as a as a group so all of the 60 people here have lots of work they need to do and it would be really useful to find out how they could continue to deliver quality work with at least the same accuracy as they have at the moment, but without having to having to get into all of this stuff. So how 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 can we buffer them from that? I th I think some of the validity checks are going to happen have to happen anyway in the geometry, so that there is going to be a, a performance hit. I don't think there's a way around that. Um. It, it would be very useful to have a, uh, to have some agreement on the mechanisms we we, we, we we need to use, but at the moment i don't think i don 't think we know we, we from QGIS, we know something of the way they do things there. From uh, from uh, grass, we know some of the things that they've done, but I don't think uh, if if there was an easy answer, then someone would have provided it. And so, that perhaps more uh, the raising issues on proj, or uh, there's the, the the difficulty there is that you know that if you raise an issue like that, then then you're you're actually asking Evan Rouen to, <laughs> to fix it. <laughs> which isn't, isn't necessarily what we need to be doing. He, he already has something like 80% of the, before uh, Google moved to Git, uh, Evan had about 80% of the commits to Google, which is a lot. And with Proj, because he's, he did the barn raising, so that with Proj it will be very similar. There, there are help, help, helpfully, there are other people there as well. So that we we probably also need to uh, need to think about buses. Um, you know what I mean by buses. So that as a community, we we need to be uh, we need to be uh, protected from Evan Rouen being out of service. Um, so that we need brought, so we need there's open source software, but we actually need to understand. Uh, more about what, what's been going on there, so that if, if fixes are needed, uh, then, then the, 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 they can be implemented. And then I can round off simply by, by the anecdote of Brian, Rip Brian Ripley has contributed to Google. It's more to the conf configure, so the con to the configure file and the libtools things, which he found were, were, weren't as robust as they could be. 
Um, but uh, so that kind of, so that when so we're not in a situation where upstream is upstream and we worry more about downstream, we need also to feed back hints, ideas, uh, and I think as we've seen from the issues which have been raised recently, the one which was was responded to about uh, the change in geos, uh, the people upstream of us really value feedback provided we provide, we, we, we give them worked examples. If we give them worked examples of what's a problem for us, then, then they're very responsive. As I said, the, the, that problem was solved in a couple of days, or it was illuminated in a couple of days, which is not something you, you, you should expect. It's something which, which we should be very grateful for. But, the, but the, the, they are there. They're, they're, they're interested in their software not causing too many problems, but they also want to keep it running nicely. And, and that, that's where we are at the moment. Okay, so I haven't uh, done any workshop stuff or code or anything, but, but um, is, is, this, is this solvable? The, the, they have a wiki entry on, on these kinds of things where, where they, they went through a, a discussion on a wiki entry with, with a number of comments, but the, the, the person implementing it was the one who sort of more or less specified what they thought they saw. Uh, there weren't really any focus groups or things like that. But, but if, if we think in terms of virtual focus groups, then I think it's something like that. So we don't want to be too... Uh, invasive in people's workflows, but we need to be sufficiently invasive. And and we can't say, okay, we'll do it. We'll do it all for you because we'll provide all the gri grids that Proj collates. Uh, but then we're f too big for CRAN, as we're we're in in hundreds of mega. So this is much more like bioconductor in terms of, of providing cur curated metadata. This is again going to be very relative to, to very, very relevant to, 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 to establish. I, I'm, I'm sure that they're, they're keenly aware of exactly the same things. Here it says that you pop up a, a, a thing and says, well, actually with QGIS, with one file that I tried, which I thought would be okay, it actually wouldn't let me go any further. But because on the uh, cho choose your transformation uh, pipeline here screen, there's no back button. The only way to get out of QGIS at that point, if you've given it a file where it's read the, uh, read the projection from the file, but that it... Uh, there's no way you you can't. I, I had I had to kill QGIS. I, I haven't made an issue on that because when I tried with different files, then it didn't happen. But it, but one file did, and then I forgot which one it was. So I'd need to reconstruct what I was doing. But uh, so it, it it's still early days. But uh, but yeah, talk, talking to people, collaborating, sharing information would be important. Okay, thank you for your patience.